What are you reading? Hi. It's the Holy Quran. But isn't the Quran only for Muslims? Not at all. Its teachings are addressed to all humanity, from heads of state right down to everyday people like us. What does it teach us? Well, it's a book of life for life. No thinking person should pass through life without it. How interesting. Where can I get a copy? Easy. At a cost of only five rand. From the IPCI, 124 Queen Street, Durban. Dear brothers and sisters, it is my pleasure on behalf of all of, of the society's board of directors and on behalf of all the brothers and sisters to welcome and introduce, and introduce a personality who really no, needs no introduction. However, brothers and sisters, we have the honor of having among, among us tonight in this holy place the great Muslim scholar of international, of international fame, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, who has kindly accepted the invitation through the Ministry of Information and Culture to speak to us about very essential subject, which will be about the role of Masjid in West. Please, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, welcome. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموئزة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين صدق الله صدق الله المرى العظيم Mr. Chairman, and my dear brothers and sisters, I understand that in the adjoining hall, our sisters are also being catered for by means of a TV screen. So I said, my dear brothers and sisters, though I see only brothers before me. The topic that has been chosen for this evening's discussion is the role of the mosque in the West, the Masjid, the Masjid in the West, people, Muslims, we, we are in a minority situation. There are Masjids there. Masjids in places like London, Paris, Berlin, Washington DC, in South Africa, Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town, these are all Western places, Western countries. And what is the role? What can they do? What can we achieve through these masjids? And how the people in these respective countries, how do they look to the mosque? The masjids in the West are really a challenge to the Western nations. digs right into their hearts, like the minarets are going deep into their hearts. Masjids in the countries, in their own countries, in England, the land of the Anglican Church, cathedrals, in France, a proud daughter of the Church of Rome, and now the Muslims are contemplating a masjid in Rome. It hurts them at their dear heart. And Islam is a challenge. It is a challenge to all these Western nations. In my country where I come from in South Africa, we have more than 300 masjids in the country. We are a very small community. We are barely half a million, to be exact about 400,000. And we have more than 300 masjids in the country. We have more than 300 madrasas, religious schools in the country. We produce hundreds of hufas in the country. And we are a challenge. 
Similarly, the Muslim, wherever he is, is a challenge to the Christians in their land. In South Africa, for 300 years, they have been trying to hammer the Muslims into Christianity. And after 300 years, they failed. They started uprooting us under a type of law of segregation, separating the peoples. So the cities, wherever we lived before, we had our masjids around where we lived, and they felt that those were better areas for the whites, the rulers of the land. So they expropriated our lands and made us to leave and go out into the world, outside the cities, starting new settlements. A place, something happened like that in Johannesburg. They pushed us out 20 miles out of the city. We had to leave our masjids behind. In the Cape, in Durban, we had to leave our masjids behind as monuments. But where we land in a new place, we put up 11 masjids with 11 minaras. Every masjid with a minara. Of course, we can't compete with anything you see in Abu Dhabi. You know? Every which way you turn, you see the minarets of masjids, mashallah, minarets of masjids. No, we can't compete with that. But in our own little way, you uproot us from one place, we put up a half a dozen minaras in another place, shooting into the sky. And we are a challenge. After 300 years, they failed to change us, they failed to convert us. We are an eternal challenge. In the West, same. Our Regent's Park Mosque, Masjid in Regent's Park, London, a beautiful structure. I visited this masjid a number of times. And the last time I went to Regent's Park Mosque, Islamic Cultural Center, I had with me a booklet a small book. I have a photo stat of that. It was in color, glorious technicolor, and it said Islam comes to Britain and is the minaret of the Regent's Park Mosque. And I showed it to Dr. Muharram, the head of the cultural center in London, Dr. Muharram. I showed him this booklet, beautiful booklet it was, this is in black and white, because it's a photostat. It says, Islam comes to Britain. So Dr. Mukharam tells me, this is our masjid. I said, yes, but I said, you didn't print it. This is printed by the Christians. So you are very happy, this is our masjid. But I said, you didn't print that, it's the Christians who printed it. You know why? No, he doesn't know why. I said, you see, they are trying to terrify the Christians of Britain, of UK, England, Scotland, Wales, terrifying them that these guys are coming, the Muslims are coming, they are going to conquer our land. They tried to do it once, you know, by the sword and the spear, they conquered Spain, they ruled that country for 800 years, and now they are making a comeback. We went and conquered the lands, we ruled them for hundreds of years, 300 years we ruled them in Indonesia, 100 years also we ruled them in India, or Pakistan, or Bangladesh, 500 years we ruled them in Mozambique, Muslim countries, Muslim territories, Mozambique, Musa bin Baik, a Muslim was ruling that place on the east coast of Africa, furthest down, it was a Muslim settlement. When the Portuguese, with a superior gunpower, they conquered the Muslims and they took possession. The governor of the place was Musa bin Baik.